My friends and I recently started resurrecting an old dirt jump spot, but the problem is this one doesn't go anywhere. So today we're going to do something about that. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're a first time viewer, my name is Jeff Lanoski. If you follow my Instagram, you might have seen this video last week. While hitting those ramps in my buddy's driveway took me back 30 years to being a teenager building ramps in the street. So today, we're building some ramps. After a run to the lumber yard, the first order of business was to unload everything. All right, so here's the game plan. Got all the wood unloaded. We're gonna cut out all the templates, the sides, the boards, everything, load it back into the van, take it to a super top secret spot, set it all up and have a session. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna build a landing first, and for the landing, we're going for straight Evil Knievel style. So I want it long and mellow. So let's sketch that out. The ramp that my buddy Mike had in his driveway was three feet tall. So we're gonna make this one 42 inches tall, a little bit taller, so it's a little bit steeper. And then the overall length of it was 12 feet. Gonna be using some power equipment, so definitely need some goggles. Wear safety equipment, kids. All right, so that's roughly what this Evil Knievel landing is gonna look like. Big case pad, super long and straight down slope. And I wanna make this landing eight feet wide. So we need to cut out three of these because I'm gonna put one straight down the center. The reason being is, when you make, build a ramp that wide, the center could take a lot of abuse. So if you put a solid piece of plywood down the center, it's an extra spine, an extra rib, and it just makes the thing completely bomb proof. So we're gonna cut out three of these total. Now when you're doing multiple transitions or side plates, you could knock them out super quick by just using one as a template, but it's super important to remember when you trace it out, you wanna cut on the inside of the line that you just made. Because if you don't do that, each one will just keep growing a little bit bigger each time. All right, so I'm back out here day two. That's basically what the landing's gonna look like. So now I gotta take this marker and we're gonna mark off where we're gonna put all the boards. Then we're gonna take all three pieces, match up those marks, put them across all three, and then we'll know just where to put those studs. In order to cut enough 2x4s for the ramp, I'm going to use a miter saw because I'm going to need a lot of boards. Throwing them on the ground probably wasn't the best idea. All right, we got all those boards cut and loaded. Now it's time to do the transition for the lawn ramp. So I've, the best way I found to do that is by using an actual board, not a string. You might see some YouTube videos where people use strings. Those are hard to keep taunt. So this board right here is eight feet long. We're gonna scab on an extra three and a half feet because I want this transition to be 11 feet, six inches. Quick ramp 101. The transition is the radius. So imagine if the curve of the ramp made a full circle. That circle would have an 11 and a half foot radius or a 23 foot diameter. The lip is gonna be 38 inches tall because I want it to be mellow and send you really far. And then I'm gonna drill a hole for the Sharpie in the boards, that way it doesn't move around. And we will use a screw for the pivot point. All 
right, we traced out the transition. Now the pro tip for this one is to use a circular saw, not a jigsaw, because the jigsaw is too accurate and it's too hard to follow the line, whereas a circular saw is more like trying to steer a barge. Using a circular saw will help you make that nice big curve a lot smoother. These tips are just gonna break right off. So I usually take a two by four, figure out where it's gonna sit on the bottom and just hack off the rest. This is where I should have gotten B-roll of me loading everything back into my van. All right, so we made it to the spot and if you've ever seen my van and wondered it, whether or not I do van life, Definitely not because I want to be able to haul wood and do projects and stuff like that. So if you have seen my van, you know, they got the awning right there and then that tent pops up. So in order to get up to that tent, I just use that ladder right there. This was all custom made, climb right up there, sleep up there, and then I could haul all kinds of wood or stick whatever else I need to inside the van. All right, so we have this super sweet jump that I'll show you a little bit more of later. And then the game plan is instead of coming down here and just turning off, we're gonna put that ramp right there so we could go full send mode and see how far we can go. I used to do a ton of course building jobs, so I have a bunch of air tools. And the one thing that I'm seriously banking on is that I can use an air gun to bang this thing together. So a couple weeks or months ago, one of my quarantine projects was putting an air compressor in here. And it's not just to fill tires. I'm gonna hopefully use it to build this ramp, which if it works, is gonna be so sick. Moment of truth. Much success. Having a nail gun to put this ramp together helped so much. And made everything go so much faster. Landing's pretty much done. That is built to spec, which means you just build it on site and close enough is good enough. I just have to scab in the front a little bit to make it blend into the ground. And now I think we're missing something, so it's time to build the takeoff. The takeoff is basically a smaller version of the landing, except the surface is curved. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. So I got a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad news. The good news is the takeoff is finished. So here's the lip, super mellow, 11 and a half foot transition. The landing is really mellow. This is like an evil Knievel landing. So this isn't what I would normally build for a jump, but the goal of this one is to just jump as far as possible. The bad news is I only have my trail bike and I took everything out to fit all that wood in my van. And I only have my Oscar blue slip-ons so we'll just test it out with these shoes on and hopefully it goes okay. So we're just gonna walk up to the landing and I'll clip this camera on my handlebars and no big jump today, just a little one. I think it's like eight feet, so should be able to do that one in flats. Oh, clipless pedals on flats, shoes. Slip on shoes, Oscar blue shoes. You wanna watch me or do you wanna watch the jump? Watch jump. Here we go. A little bit of braking. Oh, that's perfect. I built a pretty good jump, so I'm gonna have to go home, get some friends, 
come back tomorrow with the right pedals or the right shoes, whichever, um, and hit this thing up. Make sure you stay tuned.